Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another very unusual, somewhat unexplained exoplanet discovered very recently that the scientists are sort of confused about, because it just doesn't really make sense. It's way too massive, it's also kind of dense, but it seems to resemble Jupiter in a lot of other ways. In other words, we have no idea what it's made out of, or more importantly, how it was actually created. And so in this video we're going to be focusing on this paper that you can find in the description that kind of goes through some of the discoveries and some of the analysis of this star system, which of course includes that unusual planet. Although to understand the mystery we also have to understand what sort of a star system we're looking at. So first of all, this particular star, known as HD 114082a2, according to all of the observations, actually appears to be extremely sun-like. Not super sun-like, a little bit more active and a little bit hotter, but this is also a much younger star system that actually seems to be only about 15 million years old. And you gotta remember, our sun is 4.5 billion years old. So this star was just created not so long ago, in astronomical terms. Which is one of the major reasons why this star system is actually kind of exciting. In this case, this is just one of three known star systems that are younger than 30 million years old and possess some kind of a planet forming around this baby star. With the newly discovered planet around this star, currently being the youngest so far. But all three so far have also presented a bit of a mystery in regards to how they actually formed. And this is of course based on all of the other observations from all of the other star systems, where over time the scientists have been able to discover all sorts of different protoplanetary disks, with some of them forming early planets. And so today there are two major explanations for how planets form in these systems, or how planets even formed here in the solar system as well. They're known as the hot start and cold start, or more officially, as the planetary accretion or disk instability. And so based on a lot of modern observations, we know that it all usually starts with the accretion disk. But here, two different things can happen. In most cases, because of very powerful magnetic fields that these early stars and the accretion disk produce, a lot of the early particles at first become electrically charged because of, for example, static electricity, and become attracted to one another growing into larger and larger pieces. Once these pieces are large enough, they become gravitationally attracted to one another and grow into larger objects, eventually coalescing into larger planets, with some of the more massive planets growing much faster than smaller planets. And eventually if the planet becomes massive enough and finds itself in a relatively rich hydrogen and helium environment, it will start to vacuum up a lot of hydrogen and helium, eventually turning into something like Jupiter. If you'd like to understand this in more detail, check out some of the previous videos in the description. But, unfortunately, none of this has ever been directly observed, so most of this is just based on simulations and mathematical understanding. Mostly because these particles would be way too tiny to detect. But the second method of planetary formation has been detected at least once and actually relatively recently. There's another video about this in the description as well, but not so long ago the scientists found at least one planet that confirms one thing. Sometimes these large disks around stars become kind of unstable. And this instability can suddenly result in a major collapse around the star, which then produces giant planets, very likely a lot more massive than Jupiter. And they also very likely contain very different material and density on the inside, because they didn't really have that core to start with, and they didn't really go through that whole accretion method. And this also happens pretty fast, it just takes a few thousand years. With both types of planets, most likely resulting in something that looks different. Now here in the solar system, the assumption is that everything was created through the accretion method, and not through the collapse method. But that's of course still debatable. Although because of the similarity of Jupiter and Saturn, it's assumed that they were created in the same way, and it's also assumed that it's unlikely that the accretion disk instability would happen twice, creating two planets at the same time. But the point here is that there are these two methods of planetary formation. And we kind of expect these planets to form in a certain way, with certain density, with certain materials, and also become of certain size. And so far, of all of the like 10,000 exoplanets we've discovered, Pretty much all of them kind of met the expectations. But as you probably know from previous videos, there have been a few discoveries that were kind of surprising. And of all of the unusual discoveries, this planet seems to be the strangest of them all. A planet approximately 300 light years away from us that orbits its parent star every 110 days at a distance of about half astronomical units, or a little bit closer than planet Mercury. But what's intriguing about it is that in terms of the actual size, it seems to be practically identical to Jupiter in a lot of different ways. You probably are already aware how this is done, but essentially during the transit method, by seeing the shadow of the planet passing in front of the star, it becomes possible to measure its size. But over the last four years, 
the scientists have also been measuring the wobble of the star. We call this radial velocity, and that's because the planet is also pulling on the star as well, which means that the Sun shifts by just a little bit every few years. And so here, by measuring the wobble, the scientists then determined the mass of this planet, and it turns out it's huge. It seems to be at least eight times the mass of Jupiter, and that is something that we didn't expect. Nobody expected this. It actually also implies that it has really high density, at least twice the planet Earth, and at least ten times higher than Jupiter itself. Which of course makes it way too heavy for its age and also for its just general appearance. Now in this case you can see that the simulation I created has the rings around it, that's just to make it look cool. We don't really know if it has rings. But it probably does. That's how a lot of moons around Jupiter were formed around this time. But I guess more unusually, this planet is at least two to three times more massive and more dense than a lot of theories predicted in the past based on the understanding of planetary formation. So, for example, if it was created using the accretion method, it really should be much larger than Jupiter in size and should not possess as much density. Whereas if it was created through direct collapse, for the most part it should contain a lot of gas and actually be much much larger in size as well. Yet none of these explanations make sense when applied to this planet. Now in terms of the density, it's actually kind of similar to one of the other unusual planets we've discovered so far, but this one was less massive and was technically a super-Earth, possibly some kind of a terrestrial planet, basically something that has actual surface, but all of the models today predict that you cannot have a terrestrial planet that has eight masses of Jupiter. They have to become gas giants at this point. And actually have to also possess a lot of hydrogen and helium that would most likely lower their density. And so what does this leave us with? Because right now it's a pretty big mystery. Well, maybe there is a third way. A third way for planets to form that we've never really considered. Some other unusual way in which these gas giants can actually become just dense enough and massive enough without really violating any rules. But it would obviously be an extremely rare method because this is the only planet we've found so far with these properties. The other explanation could actually be in regards to the orbit of this planet. It also has really high eccentricity. The eccentricity here is about 0.4 which is about twice as much as, for example, Mercury. And by having high eccentricity, the planet alternates between approaching the star really close and moving farther away. This, of course, can influence the gases and the formation, as well as the composition of the planet. But at the same time, it can also potentially explain how this particular planet was formed. It's kind of difficult to acquire this eccentricity without interaction with something else, or without some kind of a, for example, major collision that could have influenced the atmosphere and the composition of this planet so much, that it changed its overall density while also changing its orbit. So maybe there is a bit of a hint just based on the eccentricity itself. At the moment though, nobody really knows what's happening, and this is definitely the most mysterious gas giant we've discovered in a very long time, and most scientists will probably be studying this for many many years to come. New mystery to solve, new mystery to talk about in some of the future videos. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.